What's poppin' star seeds? It's your girl Kamari Star. And we're back with some more insight. Back with some more insight. Welcome to the very first episode of Conscious Entertainment. <laughs> I'm so grateful to have you guys here today and thank you so much for liking the video slash subscribing. It means a lot to me. On these episodes, we're gonna dive deep into the underlying messages, synchronicities from movies, TV shows, songs, etc. We'll also get to the best scenes and points and just kind of go through the downloads and see what they could mean throughout all the content from beginning to end so just remember these are my opinions and you're definitely welcome to share yours as long as it's high vibrational be very very mindful on my channel but I'm definitely a welcoming spirit for those of you that are new a little bit about me I'm a Gemini Sun Libra Moon Cancer Rising and I support all things positive spiritual groovy holistic and cool i don't really discriminate like that as long as you got good vibes you cool with me i display my talents on here but i also heal spiritual vessels in this realm or whatever <laughs> that's just a little bit about me you can definitely go to my youtube profile and read more about me if you're interested i'm not even gonna hold y'all because i'm too excited to get into this so let's go ahead and do it on today's episode, we're gonna dive deep into the movie Spirited Away, directed by Hayao Miyazaki. I hope I'm saying that right. And this movie came out in the early 2000s. He's also an iconic anime director. So if you're an anime fan, go ahead and like the video right now. So many things unwind in this video, but I'm definitely gonna touch on the points that gravitated towards me and the ones that I got a lot of downloads from down from magic, manifestation, negative and positive energy transfer, spirit guides slash spirit animals, dimensions, portals, and the main character's tribe family. To give you a summary of the movie in a societal point of view, it's about a young girl named Shihiro who goes on this journey with her parents to a new city a new place and she has to leave all these old things behind and she's very like devastated and she's not having it throughout the beginning of the movie and it's about her sort of leaving that childlike mindset and knowing that she can obtain happiness herself she can like go through these trials and these tribulations and feel accomplished. She goes on this adventure into the spiritual realm and meets all these people, whether they're her tribe family, whether they're karmic, whether they're meant to help her. Very, very interesting movie. And I'm gonna play clips throughout the movie too. So in the beginning, you see her, she's holding on to these flowers, these things that, I don't know if she knows, but it's common sense that flowers don't last long, especially if they're not implanted in the ground. Looks great, doesn't it? It doesn't look so bad. It's gonna stink. I liked my old school. Ah! Mom! My flowers are dying! I told you not to smother them like that. So as you saw in that clip, she was smothering the flowers and she literally manifested them. If you listen to what she said, it's gonna stink. I like my old school better. Immediately after she says that, she notices the flowers dying. So this is the first sign of manifestation. She sees these little houses and those houses resemble like spirits living inside them. Like the first, first few minutes of the movie, another manifestation tip that the mother said was, slow down, you're gonna kill us when the dad was driving recklessly. And little do you know, they went through a portal in the spiritual realm this can also be a sign of death i don't know you just got to be conscious to understand it <laughs> going further further into the movie we're around 10 minutes now i'm going to show this clip of another manifestation point where she's like go away or whatever and she literally starts to disappear she wants to go back she wants things to like just disappear from the physical realm she's in currently unknowingly not knowing that she's making herself disappear obviously the realm was too but just think about it right after she said that literally look at this clip what i'm dreaming i'm dreaming wake up wake up wake up go away go away disappear and 
she also gets introduced to one of the first people that's a part of her tribe family or someone that could also be like a soulmate or a twin flame in my opinion just because of all the synchronicities and their oh peep the shirt i don't know <laughs> but anyway because of all that like they could be many things to each other and i'm talking about haku my favorite character he's also a spirit animal because he turns into a dragon and i'm gonna get deeper into that but he's they've known each other for a while and that's very apparent when they first see each other because they're so comfortable like you don't just go up to somebody and trust them be comfortable and say this man said look at this clip he said come with me <laughs> and they and she went with him looking for you. You've got to get out of here. Almost there. Master Aku! Where have you been? <laughs> what? A human? <laughs> Let's go! Nobody in their right mind would just do that in an unfamiliar place not feeling comfortable you're gonna kind of be suspicious but as you can see she's very very comfortable from the beginning and he notices her from the beginning too throughout the movie you see a lot of different animals you see a frog you see the pigs that her mother were turned into these can be very symbolic because um the fact that her parents were turned into pigs and they weren't able to talk shows that like maybe they wasn't as conscious in my opinion the fact that she has to go along this journey alone just shows that she's meant to introducing yababa and her bird i think her bird is a vulture so that's significant too because of the aggression of vultures have and just like what they relay in the whole story like towards the end yababa's bird kind of had like an awakening and changed sides but honestly Y'all gonna see throughout certain clips, but I really feel like Yubaba or like Yubaba's sister, she also has a twin sister, could have really been Shihiro's grandma. Cause we're gonna get into that at the end though. Stay tuned. Haku tells her to go get a job and you have to really, really want it. You have to like really show your hard work and you can do it. And then Kamaji, another person that was a part of her child family, will give her the job. And she goes in, Kamaji's kind of like, mm, who are you? Kind of like testing her. You can tell it's a test. And she's like, nah, I don't, I don't need your help. Like, go somewhere else. Just like, leave. And she's like, nope. And then you see, I'm going to play a clip right now. And I'm Kamaji, slave to the boiler that heats the baths. Move it, you stupid footballs. she just didn't give up and you see that he ended up helping her in the end she ended up getting that assistance and then comes Lynn and that's also another person a part of her tribe family could be kind of karmic too because of the position she's in it's like okay what are you really how are you really um assisting her growth in this point it kind of seems like Shihiro assisted her with her growth because even in the beginning she's already judging her she's like ugh, she has these like thoughts about her but then everybody in the story becomes like so appreciative they're very much congratulating Shihiro towards the end of the movie and then introducing no face no face is this spirit that sees Shihiro on the bridge and nobody else he notices that she's human on the bridge before anybody else he can kind of turn into a villain if depending on your mindset when he like attacked the people throughout the movie so that's a part of the tribe family i want to definitely get that out the way throughout me talking through the story and then of course you had the baby yababa's baby they um they get turned into different things by yababa's twin sister that they portray to be evil but really she's helping i also wanted to get into the magic of it and you can see in this flashback um that she's kind of clairvoyant because of the dragon in the water and I really want to touch on that, the, the magic part of it, because 
everyone is pretty much using magic in the realms except for some people and even Shihiro, even though you can't physically see her magic, she's very has she has a very magical spirit, which is why people gravitate towards her. Like No Face just wanted to give her everything because he just he kind of felt gravitated towards her. Like oh, I kind of want what you have, but Shihiro's in this sense like oh, I don't have much. And da da da. By the way, the voice of the baby is Tara Strong, who plays Timmy Turner. She plays a voice for a lot of creative cartoons and. She does amazing, but nonetheless, before I get further along into the movie, at the very beginning, they're going through portals in different dimensions by entering the spirit realm. So I didn't really touch on that too much, but yes, the very beginning to end, that's happening throughout the entire movie. And that's just, you can definitely tell because you can see throughout the movie, like her feeling the wind and her like how everything changes and even her parents literally change into pigs. Like that wasn't possible in the human realm that they were in before. There's this point where Haku gets sick because he's on this adventure doing something he's not supposed to be doing for Baba, which is somebody who's controlling him because she has his name. And that's so, so important, which is another thing that really popped out to me. It's like taking that away from somebody and stripping them of everything they know leaves them unconscious, leaves them, leaves them a little sleep. But as you can see throughout the movie, Haku is very much in his own zone, kind of confident, kind of like a don't mess with me type vibe, but being a good spirit in the back end. And back to Kamaji and Shihiro's relationship, he does a ritual, he does magic when he gets rid of the spirit because Shihiro saves Haku after he's like going through all this and he's like transformed. You can tell he got beat up or like from Hababa's sisters. I can't remember her name right now, but I'll pop it up right here. Baba's sister, he stole something from her. Meanwhile, while all this is going down, No Face has a very negative energy transfer when he enters the bathhouse. It just completely changed him. And a lot of the people in there are kind of low vibrational too. If you kind of, all they care about is money. Like that's the main thing. No Face turns into this huge monster. He just wants to give Shihiro money because he wants, he feels like that's something that she wants in order to feel like, he belongs there, but even adapting that thought when he went into there literally turned him into a monster. <laughs> Once he got all those toxins out of his body, throwing up can definitely help with um, getting rid of energy. It's true, like it's super true. Obviously cleansing yourself with different herbs, things like that too, but throwing up, detoxing, all that really, really helps. Maji kills the spirit because he's like, evil, be gone. And then also, when he gives her the train tickets, he's like, I've been saving these train tickets for 40 years. And he had four train tickets, four. And there's four of them, four, four, four. You're chosen for this journey. Like <laughs> the, the synchronicities are everywhere. And it was like, it just, me as a young kid, it's just popping up to me. Not only just being in the spiritual realm, understanding that you can communicate with the spiritual realm was so, intense and so like mesmerizing to me i became obsessed with the thought after this movie which hababa's sister was definitely her grandma which is why i'm bringing this up because why would you just call a random old woman granny that don't seem so random to like some people but that's very random you don't just call anybody granny i feel like she was there to help her assist her back and she didn't even have a way back kamaji was letting her know like this you can get there you're gonna have to get back on your own though you know what I mean? And she was like, okay, whatever. You see her whole aura change towards the end of the movie. It shows so much character growth and that's positive energy transfer. The love that she had for Haku and the love that he had for her, even like after he awakens, his very first thought is, where's Chihiro? In the beginning, when her parents turn into the pigs, anything you eat, your mindset, it's like, oh, we'll just get it now. They're, just, they're kind of very greedy in the beginning. and that affected their body. The shit that you put in your body really affects your body. So that was like a huge point. The fact that they was tearing up all that food. Shihiro didn't eat any food and she stayed the same. So take that how you want to take it, but y'all not supposed to be eating certain food. <laughs> and back to the magic in the movie, when Haku awakes and he's looking for Shihiro, she goes off to go save him because he's sick. He was misled because that was put on by his oppressor, which is Yubaba, and just somebody who's very money hungry and just doesn't really care. 
about people. You just see that their love for each other, Shihiro and Haku, breaks the spell. That's the only thing that broke it. Without that, he would have been gone. He would have been dead. I don't want to put a title on them because they're young and it's like, yeah, whatever. Winding down towards the end of the movie, the tribe family, a few people, I'm going to pop their names up and some pictures, they're making this sort of yarn thing for Shihiro and her granny Yibaba's sister tells her to put it on because it was made by your friend so that's like the biggest thing that signifies that okay these are part of your tribe family they're meant to further you along your path just because somebody's a part of your tribe family doesn't mean they're always going to be there forever people have different missions and different things to accomplish but just knowing that that support along the way helped her that was great. And also, No Face finds a fix. He finds his home with Yubaba's sister and he feels complete. Then, on her way back home, Haku shows up at the end. As a, was he a dragon? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was a dragon. He showed up. She's just like, Haku! And she runs to him. They go back, headed back, trying to get her parents. You know what I'm saying? And she has this clairvoyant vision being underwater, losing her shoe and thus giving Haku the remembrance of his name. I'm gonna just play the clip. Granny! Thank you so much. I'll miss you. Don't worry, you'll be all right. tear things down or take things away we lose culture and that was important to me too at a young age like why would they even do that her being able to get that vision and kind of fully awaken him even though he is part of her guide was so significant to me it's like okay you have to elevate your mind too even though you're in this 3d realm you're here for a reason whether it is to help the longing, the prolonging of the spiritual realms be a vessel, be intertwined, interconnected, that's your mission. So if you're not accomplishing that, things will just fade away. I don't know. So Shihiro passes the test and her human parents end up on the human side. They wake up from the spell or whatever and Haku tells her to go and not to look back. So that's significant with not looking back on your past and needing to move forward in order to thrive, in order to truly be abundant and have what's for you. And knowing that you have these ancestors and these people and these spirit animals and guides behind you helped her. The fact that like probably a soulmate is saying this to her is so significant too because in some senses a lot of karmic situations can hold you back. So that's kind of how you can tell the difference. And it's also interesting how everybody didn't like her in the beginning because she didn't really stand up for herself and be like, okay, this is how I am. But when she was standing up to no face and like, hey, can you please leave? Like, I don't want the money. You're you're doing way too much. After all these things, accomplish your parents. She's like, yeah, Baba tries to fool her. She's like, are you sure that's your parents? And she's like, yeah, yeah, they're not here. Like, you know what I mean? Like she trusts her intuition, which is the most important thing you have to do in order to truly prosper in life if you don't trust your intuition i feel like those people continuously go in a loop it's like you you keep doing the shit knowing you're not supposed to do it and that's on you like stay sleep last point when they do go to that other side her parents don't remember anything they wake up back y'all was in this whole realm Y'all was in this portal and the fact that they're older i feel like is why they don't remember anything kids are just more conscious they were born more conscious like from babies to teenage to adolescence it's like 
those things kind of get lost or whatever so towards the end the very last line she says something about the school again and she's like i think i can handle it manifesting again that she knows she got this because of the journey she just went through if she went through that she can go through anything thank y'all so much for watching the video that's the end this was one of the very first anime movies to help me consciously as far as the spirit realm so i can definitely give a gratitude shout out to the director just knowing that there is that side it, it helps me thank y'all so much for liking and subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next bye bye <laughs>